Listening to podcasts is no replacement for real training. While we attempt to provide accurate commentary, we hold no responsibility on how you use the information we provide. Get medical training. In the blink of an eye, every day order can be replaced with once in a lifetime chaos. Be prepared. This is the Civilian Medical Podcast. And speaking of chaos, my name is Sean Heron. Uh, I do a lot of other podcasts that you may have heard of, like We Like Shooting. And with me, as always, is my compatriot and my co-host here on the Civilian Medical Podcast. His name is Dietrich. He is the skinny medic and also kind of a, you know, kind of a baller, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So we have a cool company with us today, Sean. Yeah, I, have, I'm actually very excited here. We are too. Like I'm excited. You're excited. Uh, this is a company that this was like one of the first companies to send me stuff on YouTube, which I was excited about. And they actually listen to our podcast. Oh wait, they do. We actually have listeners. I was pretty excited. I thought we were just doing this for ourselves. <laughs> 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 Reference material. So we have VanQuest. We have uh, you guys want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, this is Alex, uh, the ops manager. And this is Mike, the co designer and accounts manager. Very nice. So, first off, thank you guys very much for being here. We truly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, second off, how boring is your day that you listen to this podcast? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, we're always. Uh, we're always busy working, so it's we have to have play something in the background. Otherwise, we go crazy. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yeah, like you guys have like a forty-five minute drive into work, right? Some of you do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much, and uh, we're only driving about twenty miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. That, that's, yeah, that's typical. Yeah. It's Los Angeles, Orange County, you know, Southern California, so it's inescapable. Yeah. yeah. It's just a fact of life. Let's get into it. So, Alex, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you to VanQuest. Sure. Uh, well, um, essentially, um, I'm the option manager for VanQuest uh, and also the co-founder. Um, the other person who isn't here with us today because he's he's traveling right now is James, and he's the um, the COO slash you know director of R and D and also the the founder of the company. Um, both uh, James and I uh, set up uh, VanQuest back in 2011, but uh, we have a Kind of a, a history in uh, nylon gear going back uh, about close to 15 years now. And how about you, Mike? Yeah, I'm kind of the customer, to be quite honest. I'm the guy who usually buys this type of gear. You know, I'm into knives and flashlights and firearms and carrying them and learning more about them. So for me, my background is mostly kind of the uh, the retail sales and the collecting of, but really just kind of the, the customer that was able to transition into a role that listens to the customer and then just implements what they're asking for into product development and, uh, you know, delivered, uh, items. Very cool. Alex, when you, when you founded the company, what was the goal? Uh, well, it was, the goal was really just to kind of create better gear than, than what's been out there, uh, over the years, you know, um, to give a little, little bit of a background on, on myself and James, um, we were the original, uh, two thirds uh, co-founding members of Maxpedition uh, back in 2003, which a lot of people know the company. Um, James at the time was the majority owner. Um, and at that time we had pretty much started the civilian slash everyday tactical concept before 511 tactical really kind of took it over uh, as well as a few other companies. But um, kind of being like one of the first innovators in that um, was something that we wanted to, to do because we, we felt that uh, there was a market there that um, that needed better gear, uh, stuff that was that was made better and designed more for them than traditionally law enforcement military. Makes a lot Mike, of sense. Mike, you got a pretty cool story about how you got started with VanQuest. Like you were just kind of hanging out. You said you were a consumer, but you were just kind of hanging out with them, and they just, you pestered them until they gave you a job. <laughs> yeah, it's not how it's not the story of how you met your wife, dude. This is <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I, I was actually at a gun show and I'd never heard of the company before, never seen any of the products. You know, they were a couple years in, uh, I think two mm -hmm. or three years into yeah. shipping products. 
and I just kind of was talking about my first passion, which is knives, cutlery. And James overheard me and said, hey, would you like to write some product, um, you know, descriptions and some other stuff? And I said, sure, seems lucrative. You know, I'll show up and kind of move my position all throughout the company. I did every single job. You know, at the time, it was a three man operation once yeah, I joined right. mm -hmm. and just got up to the top to where uh, I got to be the guy that is. It's pretty cool. I'm like the guy representing the customers because that's me. I still use all of our gear. I actually make sure I carry everything we we design and actually use it. And yeah, I just kind of I would say that I fell into it. I did not go to design school. I did not pursue, you know, a traditional apparel design and all that. But uh, I don't know. I just kind of had an eye for really functional and useful stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I've worked with you before on some new designs, kind of thinking about what the next step is or kind of redoing some of the bags. And so, you know, I've seen that come to tuition, you know, that effect of saying, Hey, look, I like this better. Um, I think this would work better for, especially for what we're doing first aid kits, things like that. So uh, I appreciate the, you guys letting, listen to our feedback. Yeah. Um, we think it's pretty important because, you know, we don't have emergency medical trauma training background, you know, some classes here and there, but very remedial stuff. So we're going to turn to someone who's a working professional like yourself and like some of the other medical dealers we have and some guys who teach GCCC. And there's even one former um, dealer of ours who's an Aussie and he's still contracting. I think he's over 60 and he's still contracting as a combat medic. Man, which, uh, dude, ultimate tan, right? But also yeah, beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, man, he's still in the sandbox coming back and forth. It was hard to get a hold of him for a while. But he had direct input saying, hey, this will actually help. So if you could change that, great. And often it's pennies. I mean, pennies to change something. So we're happy to do it. What was the first product that VanQuest brought to market? Uh, actually, yeah, it was um, for the first products we actually put out was the Javelin V-Slinger Sling Pack, uh, the Envoy uh, Messenger Bag, and uh, a couple of smaller items like our isopod pouch and the uh, RFID blocking wallets. Those were the, the first things we that um, James and I worked together um, and I co-designed with him uh, back in 2011. And then we actually, after establishing the company and, and getting everything going, we didn't have the products out till about 2013. I have a VanQuest wallet on me right now. Yeah, but it's yeah. empty, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because Sean takes all my money. He's That's true. I, I make him pay me uh, to hang out with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm still rocking my original one I had six years ago, one of the very very first ones. <laughs> Mine's pretty old. It's it's yeah. it's old. So uh, no one has stolen my identity yet. So I I guess yeah. it's working clearly. <laughs> It was funny. Like I would keep my EMS ID in there and like, I would forget every time and go to like, try to swipe my badge and it was in my wallet. I'm like, why is this thing not working? <laughs> oh yeah. Hold on. Sorry. Let me take it out. Just swipe my badge to get in the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like I've used your backpacks a lot. Obviously we, we love the fat packs, but the backpacks for me, like I've kept them out in the rain. I've dropped them in creeks before and they have held up. Um, I still do search and rescue a good bit. So I would like to kind of talk about that manufacturing, like how you guys are making good quality gear that is able to withstand the torture that at least I, I can put it through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'll be quite honest. I mean, there are times when we have taken comments on YouTube videos, looked at it, had a quick design meeting and go, that is a good idea. That one single suggestion and implemented it across every single bag. And it cost us, I don't know, a penny more, maybe that. Um, Sometimes customers just, it's impossible for us to know everything. It's impossible for us, even with there were 16 designers over here to predict how everyone's going to use it. You know, everyone's professional or even just, you know, daily use. So we really do start with the customer feedback and requests, you know, from email, phone, social media, in person at trade shows, definitely from reviewers, um, because that's why we're sending the bags out to you guys. So you can tell us what you like, what you don't like. And we shave off the things that people don't like or would prefer to change and anything that they're enjoying we just reinforce that but uh yeah from there the next stage is to determine the viability and how useful it would be to develop a product so we are pretty lucky customers don't actually ask us for a wi-fi enabled 
bulletproof, you know, <laughs> LED light. That's something that exists out there. There's there's mm -hmm. solar panels, you know. They don't ask for that because it's not really practical and it's not actually solving a daily, uh, you know, need or want. So from there, you know, once we say, okay, this is a viable thing, um, let's say like an even bigger fat pack that's like squad based for two or three people. So we go bigger than the seven by 10. And then it, we'll hand draw designs um, and, you know, we'll just kind of go to the first prototype. Sometimes we'll take an existing pack of ours or just some amalgamation of different packs and uh, go from there from a prototype and revise, repeat it, you know, three or four prototypes getting back from the factory. And then the final prototype, and we'll check that out. We'll test it, of course. We test in between to make sure it's comfortable, it works. To be quite honest, if something ends up looking good, that's a total mistake, man. We're not out here to actually make cool-looking stuff. It just happens to look good. The function and the form, you know, it's really for, uh, function over form for us. The last thing we can consider is how cool or sexy it's going to look. Um, but, yeah, it depends. Like, if... Uh, if we wanted to start off air after this, talking about developing something new that you guys had an idea for, it could be anywhere from six months to a year if it's simpler or based off of something we already make. I mean, it could be a lot faster. But yeah, it's it's a process that is involved mostly with the uh, info that we gather direct from feed, from users. I'm glad you mentioned uh, our, our ideas because we have this idea for a wireless bulletproof uh, backpack with LED lights and solar panels on it. <laughs> All that needs to fit in a four by six. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. dude, there's an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys kind of slipped up just a little bit. And we've talked about this on the phone, the, the seven by 10, making one just a little bit bigger, maybe into like a sling bag. Is that something that maybe is going to be in the future looking at or? Um, not not on the books, but again, okay. I mean, we're so freeform. That's the cool thing about being a five-man operation and not having levels of bureaucracy. As you definitely know, working for a larger EMS service, you just want to get something done. And mm -hmm. there's four or five other people mm -hmm. that need to approve it who don't have anything <laughs> to do with your actual job. We don't have, have a that. committee on top of a committee. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, no. So, uh, I mean, most people have dealt with that in their lives. And yeah. we don't really have that barrier. So we can... I mean, we can talk about that for real and uh, do it. I like the idea. Yeah, you know, when you guys come out with the red, like that was huge for me because, you know, we have been selling the four by six, the five by eights, the seven by tens, and those are all good color choices you guys provide. But when the red came out for the market, I was like, man, this is it. And we have done, that's been by far the most popular bag that we have. That's awesome. I mean, we love hearing that too because um, we, we've seen that also. And from the customer um, feedback we've been getting, uh, they really enjoyed the, the new red fat packs. Um, and we wanted to make it a little bit different than what was traditionally out there. I mean, like with ours, you know, it's got uh, red with um, wolf gray trim on it. Typically, you see black trim on, on almost everything out there that exists. So we had to make ours a little bit more unique. But I think it overall looks a lot cooler um, than what's out there. But um, but like 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 uh, Mike was saying about, you know, being in the committee and all that. The nice thing is that because we're a small operation, we don't have to do that. Um, years ago when I was at Surefire before I, I helped start VanQuest, um, we would go through meetings like that and with engineers and all that. And there's all this layer of bureaucracy you have to go through. The nice thing is that we come up with an idea or we have an idea that we can work with. We'll take a, an existing bag, cut it up, uh, make our own little hand prototype, and then send it off um, so that it can be produced by the factory and just to try to get the whole process rolling as quickly as possible. Yeah. My wife, uh, I even said in the review video, like she loves the red, but she hates the orange inside. She says they don't match. So I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> you, yeah, but uh, <laughs> come on, man. She gets pretty torqued about that when people buy like a red <laughs> such and such pouch and then a buy an orange cat tourniquet. Like she's like, these, these don't match. I'm like, babe, they're not trying to go for matching here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. People are obsessed about that though. <laughs> so you guys have some cool backpacks out right now. And just want to kind of just, if we could just go over those a real, you know, quick kind of give you guys, our listeners an idea about what kind of backpacks, if they're looking for it, what you guys provide. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say that uh, probably our, one of our most popular backpacks, um, would be the Trident 21. Um, we've actually just released the new Trident 21 for this year. It's the um, 
third generation model um, from the Trident going back, I think, to 20... When did we make that? I think it was 2015, yeah. I think, is when we originally came out with the, the, with the original Trident. And, um, you know, over these years, you know, we're always constantly improving it, uh, again, from the customer feedback and, and feedback from reviewers like yourself. Um, you know, that always helps to, to raise the bar on the next new model. Um, and this year, we, we've really kind of pushed it even higher by doing a lot of redesigns on the back panel. Uh, we've implemented um, a full loop lining on the inside of the main compartment. So now you have more areas to attach um, Velcro accessories um, so you can help with the organization and customization on the inside. Um, and the Trident 21, 21 is really optimized for you know EDC gear, laptops, photo and video gear, even drone gear as well, uh, since drones are really popular now. Um, and Overall, we've, we've been getting lots of great feedback from customers. They really like it, and they're enjoying um, everything that we've put into the bag. We're always you know, finding ways to increase the value and while maintaining excellent quality. Yeah, that's pretty great. I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> Seems like it does solve a lot of problems, and the, the construction of everything looks pretty good. Would you say that's one of the things that, that sets you guys apart from a lot of other uh, competitors out there? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I mean, the truth is you can just take uh, a big chunk of money and head to head start a competing company with almost any nylon or apparel company at any time you want. But oftentimes when people do that, and we've seen a couple you know, companies do that since we've been around for so long, uh, at least James and Alex, they will go for something where they can maximize the profit. And so they won't go with the, the trusted, durable name brands like we always use Cordura. Um, for our main packs and um, cry precision, you know, multicam, multicam black, YKK zippers, you know, ITW and Duraflex hardware. Even the hardware we use, uh, we don't use the generic nylon hardware. We use acetal, and that's a really strong polymer that makes most of the Glock pistol frame up. It's, uh, you know, it costs a little more per buckle, of course, but it's that much more durable. So it's something that's that's awesome. We are really almost never, ever, even in the small, really small things that normally wear out we still want to maximize uh, long-term durability it's not a three to five year product hopefully if you don't lose it it would be kind of a lifetime you know thing so it's it's an investment and it's more of a carry system than it is a sack you know it's just actual options to carry but durability is up there we actually have never even had any elastic or velcro and those things get used constantly wear out ever reported and we would know because we have some pretty picky customers when it comes to Busting oh, yes. out the ruler and talking about the left strap is one half millimeter higher than the right. Yeah. It's all skinny medic. I know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the pouches, bring it, uh, bring it around to medical here. Uh, when did you guys get into that and what, what brought you there? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing with the fat pack was it was interesting because a lot of people had a quick deployment pouch that was, you could say, similar. And of course, now, um, you know, 511 North American Rescue and a score of other companies have a pack that opens like that. But really, it's nothing new. That concept was a United States Navy medical trauma pack and the design, not everything, Molly didn't exist back then, but a lot of that design straight up there was a patent 1979 that we found and it's very similar to um camera lens pouches you know from canon and nikon that were in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s so the deployment and the way it opens it's not something that we came up with um but neither did really anybody else i think it was the mark ii navy medical pack that's kind of hard to find but we we kind of saw that and there was a pro proliferation of this design and of course for trauma it's instantaneous you rip it open and everything's right there so it made a lot of sense. But to implement it, again, back to working with, um, you know, EMT medical professionals, um, you know, former military medics, and the first gen was there. It worked. The concept was down. But we knew that we had to improve it just because we got so much feedback saying, I wish it could do this or that. Even one guy, the aforementioned um, former Australian uh, combat medic, he even shot himself in the foot because he made a very inexpensive but awesome tourniquet holder for cat tourniquets out of Kydex. 
and it goes in a single channel of Molly. And then he said, you know what you need to do is build in, you know, the elastic. He's like, hey, you should build in a tourniquet holder on the side. I'm like, uh, okay, you sure? Because you're the one selling these $15 tourniquet holsters for cats on the side of the, the bags that work perfectly. And he said, do it, man. It'll help more people. So that was a, the great, you know, kind of a mentality to have is he's like, you should do this for everyone else. So what if it hurts my sales of this one sheath that I sell? Yeah, the, the object, the idea is basically to kind of just put something that's going to be more useful to everybody uh, out there rather than just focusing on trying to make an extra buck here or there. Yeah, absolutely. That does make a lot of sense. Now, Skinny Medic, I know you have a lot of uh, experience with their medical pouches and stuff. What, what are some of your thoughts there? So for me, like I love the five by eight. I think that's the perfect size. Um, the four by six is we, we put our small kit in there. It's kind of like our basic first aid kit. Um, and we will attach like the cat or pressure bandage to the outside because it has little elastic bands on the outside. Yeah. But for me, that five by eight is the perfect size. The seven by 10 gets, gets big, uh, you know, but for a vehicle kit or a shop kit like that, it's, it's a great size. Um, I like the fact that I'm seven by 10 that the, the pouch to off the lid un, you know, unzips, so it's it's able to put smaller items in there without it getting thrown all over your kit. Uh, but that five by eight is a good sweet spot that we're able to put, you know, our large kit in there. We're also able to put our full trauma kit in there. Uh, so for me, that that five by eight is kind of the sweet spot. I do actually love the, uh, you know, you guys already talked about it, but how it how it does open up. I have one. I'm not sure what size it is actually. I use it in classes a lot. And it's definitely one of the popular ones that people grab because, you know, you just grab one thing, rip that front open and everything's there exposed and organized. And it, it, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I, I actually got it from Skinny Medic or Medical Gear Outfitters a couple of years ago. That's how it's done. And the material that you guys are using on that, like you said, you said you, is good quality because if you leave it out in the rain or it gets wet, you don't have to worry about your five by nines or four by fours, your galls is getting messed up because it's all nice and sealed in the package. So, um, inside the kit. So that works out well. Yeah. Um, we realized, cause the thing is people don't understand if you want to make a waterproof pack, you can, but waterproof zippers, that's a short term concept. I mean, they will stay waterproof for a while. They, they're very active. You using them wears the, the waterproofness down. Um, and it adds a considerable cost and sometimes weight to a pack. So we actually, from the factory, durable water coat, uh, DWR coat the bags. So other than the zipper, everything is coated and it does a pretty good job. We would call them rainproof more than waterproof. But right. actually, I mean, that's the cool thing is we asked uh, a bunch of different medical dealers of ours, hey, you guys use these for classes all the time. What, if anything, has worn out or what can we improve? And so far, people just... Like you mentioned, a little longer shock cord on the four by six would be nice. And, uh, you know, some minor things like that. Yeah. When you guys came to me at the beginning of the year, like, hey, what would you change? And like, that was literally the only thing my wife and I could brainstorm on. Like, all right, well, what will we do to fix it? And it's the four by six is because we put a little small, a lot of those small items in that four by six, like band-aids, medicine, some ointments. So we felt like just, you know, give us an extra inch on the shock cord. And you guys were like, that's easy enough to do. That's pennies. Like you were talking about earlier, that's pennies to add to our stuff to give you an extra, you know, a little bit on your shot cord. So, um, I've had one of your backpacks out. I took a two day, uh, pistol class. It rained both days solid and none of my camera gear or anything that was in the backpack was, if it was fine, I'd take it out, take a little bit of a video, maybe take a few pictures, shove it right back into the pack, zip it up and all my gear stayed dry. So I was, that was the big test for me. And I, I was happy how it came out. Yes. I remember you telling me about that as well. And, and, uh, and, and I was very glad to hear that. I mean, it's, it just kind of goes to a, a testament of, you know, how we think we try to think through how people are going to use the gear. And, and in your case, you know, we're, we're very happy that, that you had no issues with your electronics gear. Uh, something as simple as just reversing those zippers so that way they have a tighter seam so you have less chance of moisture getting inside um, as well as you know uh, like like Mike mentioned uh, coating the fabric and materials in DWR durable water repellent so that way uh, it beads off moisture um, again those little things add up to a, a much larger thing um, and overall just makes for better gear yeah 
and I like the orange. I, I do like the orange reflective inside. You know, not reflective, but that that mm-hmm. high visibility orange because you know, say someone's putting a black cat or you know something, it makes it easier to stand out that you can see. Even like in your backpack, you know, I'm mm-hmm. looking for something simple like a black cord. That orange, I can find the cord that I'm looking for. So I do like the the color contrast there. Yeah, uh, exactly. And that's something that that's always been uh, our signature thing since day one. Uh, and it actually kind of goes back to uh, camera gear and camera bags. Um, James is an avid photographer. A lot of the photos that you see, like our product photos, as well as the photos on our website, uh, all of those he shoots in, in, in actual uh, national parks and everything. But um, he and I both have a thing for photography. And that was something that, that was a small thing that, that we saw would be a great thing to have in a bag. And again, for that reason, you want to be able to see what's inside, get to it quickly. Um, but also at the same time, you know, we want to use really good material. So we use actual ripstop nylon rather than, you know, cheaper quality pack cloth or pack nylon. And um, uh, it's funny because we've had customers ask us, why is the, or- the inside orange? And, and some people say, oh, we don't like that. But I had a customer once um, call me and, and said, you know, He's like, at first, I, I wasn't thrilled about the orange, but then one day when I was trying to find something, then it occurred to me like, oh, now I understand why it's orange because now I can see everything on the inside. So um, those little concepts, um, again, just add towards a better gear and it, it's basically designed just to help the user um, just get to their gear quickly. What's uh, in the notes I see cube. Tell, tell us about that or tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, absolutely. The um, the sticky cubes is actually a new product that we came out with this year, and essentially they're lightweight and expandable uh, pouches. That um, on the back side, what we've done is we've added some um, some loop uh, velcro on the back side. Oh, excuse me, some hook velcro. So then that way um, you can attach those pouches onto the inside of certain bags uh, that have like a loop lining on the inside or even something like your suitcase, for instance. So you can organize your travel gear or medical gear or whatever you want to carry on the inside um, and then uh, be able to attach it onto the the type of loop surface. It's something that we really haven't seen anywhere um, on the market. We kind of took the packing cube and evolved it because we've seen packing cubes. You can get them everywhere. I mean, you can go to Target, I think, and get a set of three for 20 bucks. But the materials that they use, again, the 210D ripstop nylon, we use that to line our bags, and that's what those packing cubes are made of. That's something that you know a company like Osprey or a, an outdoor technical hiking bag might. The entire bag would be made out of 210D, and that's also DWR coated. So, you know, it defeats the purpose because the mesh on front, the tough mesh that we use, that is breathable. So it's not a completely waterproof little thing. Uh, but you know, being lightweight and expandable is pretty cool. When I went to Shot Show, I took eight pairs of socks, underwear, and large size t-shirts. And I put, you know, all the socks I needed in the small cube. It's like 17 bucks. All the underwear I needed in the medium cube, that one's like 22. And the large ones, $27. I fit all large size shirts in there. Um, I was kind of surprised myself, to be honest. But it just makes it easier, quicker. And it lends itself pretty well as a medical kit, especially the smaller uh, sticky cube with the Velcro on the back and the little, you know, Velcro ID tag on the front. You could throw something on there. That looks super handy. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I, I could use these, and the prices are really reasonable as well. Uh, for even the biggest sticky cube, twenty five bucks, and then down from there. Well, we've kind of talked about um, before is using that sticky cube. So it just kind of goes into the next part of the notes, but you guys have, you know, you've got some really cool patches now. you got some new zipper pulls out. So, but you could color code those things. Like you could have a cube that says you have red pull uh, Spartan zippers on it. You have the red med uh, label on it and you put all your bleeding control stuff in there. You know, your tourniquet, your, your combat galls, your sea logs, your pressure bandage. And then maybe you have one that's blue uh, and you put blue zipper pulls on it. You have a blue med and that is your airway stuff. And you could color code those things and keep them pretty well organized inside of your backpack and makes it like, I, even if you're with bystanders, like I need you to hand me that red, the red pack right there. And like, they can see the red zippers. They see the red ID patch. So you can kind of cor- color coordinate your items in your kit to keep them better organized. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's the whole point is, is to have a instant color identification. So that way, like you said, just say, Hey, give me that red pack right over there. And then they, they can go ahead and, and grab it uh, and then get, you know, get to the medical gear quickly. Um, it's, it's pretty much um, a concept that we uh, kind of borrowed from a friend of ours, uh, who's also a, a YouTube reviewer, uh, the urban prepper. And, um, we had worked with him on uh, a small project called the Preppers Color Coding Kit. So using the same concept of, you know, uh, uh, colors to identify certain gear, um, we're looking into trying to kind of merge that now with our Spartan zipper pools. Um, and we started offering, you know, the red and blue uh, Spartans uh, more for medical gear identification. But I think in the future, we may come up with a couple other extra colors to kind of follow that same um proper color coding kit concept. Um, another thing too, um, which is a new thing is, is the new um, glow in the dark medical patches. Um, we've worked with a few medical professionals. Um, and of course, those were, you know, direct results from the surveys we had with some of those um, medical gear dealers. As in their idea, like I literally called them up and said, Hey, what do you guys need to see as far as ID for medical kits or something like that. And they said, you need to make a big fat pouch that says med, M-E-D on it. And that could mean medication or medic or whatever and slapped on and whatever. And please God, make it in red and blue. And we said, well, absolutely. So that's direct from, um, you know, me just surveying medical dealers and not my, not our idea, but your guy's idea to help out. That's pretty great. What's yeah, I like the idea. I, I actually use the zippers, those Spartan zippers on my, my vest because I can get to the I, it makes it easier especially wearing gloves and like that I feel like I can open up my pouch easier oh, yeah. uh, than having just a regular even like 550 cord stuff like that uh, if I have you know those bigger something to grab a hold of I can get to my pouch open open faster yeah the uh, the molded pools uh, the Spartans it was something that that we wanted to uh, basically transition away from uh, paracord loops on our gear and just focusing more on Spartans on, on pretty much everything. Um, and we've been doing that. Some of the newer models from last year and this year uh, now have Spartans standard on them. Um, and of course we offer them separately in a pack that you can get for about eight bucks, uh, fairly inexpensive. And then that way, you know, you can customize your, your gear however you like. Yeah, um, just a quick note, those paracord pools we used to do, I mean, they worked pretty well and it was that fisherman's knot, but mm -hmm like your shoelaces, it can definitely come undone. Um, and the other thing, it was kind of a production slowdown. You got to understand those knots were all hand tied at the factory. Oh, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> there's, there's 12 per trident, three, four colors of trident, you know, and that's one size of trident. So there was just people in the factory constantly hating life, tying this stupid little knot. And we're going, you know, what's faster. And also a, a, in the end game, a better, just functionality is uh, make our own zipper one molded zipper pools, but the color coding thing, it's huge, man. Like we could go green for respiratory stuff. You could go yellow for med medications, you know, um, and we'll do that. We have a plan. We will actually release all those colors. You know, it, it's a long-term plan. I can't give you a date, but that will happen. And then it'll be even easier to color code stuff. Yeah. I was just thinking, I was going to put a note down. Like I even, we can talk about it afterwards, show, but even yeah. like if you had come up with something that would follow the March algorithm, uh, yeah. for yeah. trauma and have a card like you have that prepper uh, coded card yes and have yeah. that and then have the colors that go with like you know, massive bleeding airway respiratory circulation heat loss so head injuries uh, mm -hmm. all those colors would be fantastic you know yeah. you can have a little id card that kind of help a cheat sheet there uh, but different colors like that that you could build a backpack out of or even a you know a smaller kit to have color code like that would be awesome yeah, yeah. absolutely man Totally agree. It would be pretty amazing. Um, what's in your medical kits, guys? Uh, well, for myself personally, I actually got one from a um, former dealer of ours. Uh, uh, and uh, he had set me up with um, basically all this gear on the inside. I mean, it's, it's really basic. Uh, I'm still needing to learn a lot of uh, – actually, I really need to get more of the training, <laughs> like uh, Dietrich always says. Um but yeah, I've got like, you know, various sizes of gauze pads, bandages, um, uh, emergency blanket in there, um, like gloves, uh, I guess some kind of like quick clot in here as well. Um, 
some four by fours. Even fit a Sam split. He has his set up in a, a fat pack, which oh. stands for first aid trauma pack, by the way. Yeah, the, perfect. The Thank you. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I thought they were named after me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On the outside, I got a, a cat tourniquet. And then on the opposite side, I have a trauma shear. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I have it set up so that uh, it, it lives in my car. So I have um, uh, one of our mole air panels in the back so I can slap it onto the loop loop lining on the inside of my, my trunk. So if I ever need to uh, help somebody out, I just, you know, and it's, it's a red one too. So I just tell them, Hey, back of the car, grab that red bag. And, and there you go. You know, everything's right there to help somebody out in case they need it. I love it. What about you, Mike? Dude, you don't want to know. I have so many improvised tourniquets, tampons and cans of Narcan. <laughs> I won in poker games off of pol patrol officers I, I could just threw up, pontoon. dude. I could bring a, I could build a pontoon of ineffectiveness with all the junk I carry around. <laughs> oh, I have a migraine now, <laughs> dude. Oh, chest steel. It's, it's come on, man. You just get a piece of paper. You put some tape over it. You know, crazy glue. Yeah, <laughs> crazy glue. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go drink coffee shot. Can you finish this show out? Like I'm <laughs> a Walmart receipt, and then pour water over it. It'll be yeah, good. dude. No you know. Problem. No problem. <laughs> it sounds like Sean and I need to come out and do a class at VanQuest in the <laughs> warehouse. We'll just do a shop. Real, we'll do a class there. <laughs> Especially for me. I'm the guy that has like 500 knives, man. I definitely don't want to bleed to death. No doubt. Yeah. All right. So tampons got it. <laughs> you have, you have work cut, cut out for us. <laughs> no, to be, to be honest, it is something I'm, I'm uh, comfortable with. I'll put it that way. Like, you know, I don't have an, I don't have any, uh, uh, you know, like a 28 French, you know, I don't do any of the decompression needles. I'm not all like criked out civilian guy. It's just stuff that through Boy Scouts and even through uh, first aid training that I've had somewhat recently, I'm familiar with definitely cat tourniquet. I agree with Dietrich. It's pretty easy for one hand application. And uh, yeah, I just, just stuff, just remember we're in Southern California. It's a little bit warmer. So, you know, we don't have to worry about going over heavy winter clothing there's just, uh, and that's something that we try to consider too. For some, um, somebody says, "Hey, I want the a Trident backpack. Should I get the 21 or should I get the 32 liter?" And we go, "Well, where do you live? Pacific Northwest? Does it rain? Are you going to carry medical gear and your lunch and your camera stuff? Mm -hmm. You know." Um, so yeah, also five by eight in red. Actually, I posted it, and Dietrich was very kind to send out the blue trainer cat and some blue shears so I could get this whole Superman theme going on my, on my five by eight. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. That was a good looking kit. Like I liked it. Yeah. That, yeah. That's like the captain America medical kit. I would yeah. Say. <laughs> this looks really cool. Exactly. That, that's amazing, man. But yeah. Uh, Dietrich, uh, why don't you take that last question? So I just was curious, like what is coming up? for VanQuest? Like what's coming up in the next six months? What's coming next year? What do we, what's the future look like for VanQuest? All oh. right. Well, there's a couple things. I mean, one of the big things is um, we've seen in, in our market for a while, people started a little bit a while ago, but a company like Vertex, you know, they're doing kind of the uh, under the radar uh, tactical where they're focusing really on deploying, you know, armor and a firearm, usually an SBR or something. But what customers have been asking for and what we actually implemented on this current uh, release of products for 2019 was just something that's less tactical. Just don't look like you got off of a deployment. You know, you're the uh, wannabe or part-time contractor guy. So we toned down everything on our standard line, but we will be making a transition. I think you'll see it at the 2020 SHOT Show into like a more urban or what you would just call a normal kind of looking bag, a bag that obviously looks at home, at work, traveling, at school, you know, it doesn't scream, you know, you know, want to be operator or guy carrying a thousand dollars of tactical gear on him. It's just kind of a normal bag still imbued with all the really good high function uh, features that we like to uh, bombard customers with, you know, like, so you don't have to worry Hey, I got the bag. Now I have to buy all these organizational pouches and other things just to set it up so I can use it day to day. So there'll be a line of that. Um, yeah, like I said, 2020 shot show. So that's about six months out or less. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's something that we've been kind of working on for a little while now. Uh, we just wanted to kind of 
have a better feel of how we're going to go about it. Um, and it's going to be a separate line from our existing, you know, products. Um, it's, we're not changing every, we're not like, uh, we're not like changing overnight everything, but it's just something that's going to be complementing our products as well. Uh, for those that want more of the less tactical, lower profile, uh, more discreet looking uh, gear, but again, still have all that functionality and features that, that everybody's come to expect from VanQuest. And for sure, one thing that Dietrich will like is we really want to do a larger, you know, uh, hard to say stomp pack or something like that. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. trauma, so not always, but mash casualty in general is just a good idea. Um, not the standard duffel bag that, you know, the, the medic turtle backpack that you show up with, but maybe even taking something like the Ibex 26 you know, taking away some of those awesome camping, hiking, and bushcrafting features, and then just building in roughly for the same cost, uh, inherently good uh, organization for medical gear. So that's something that, and like you said too, a larger fat pack that's basically a, a sling bag that you can either attach to a plate carrier or to somebody's rig or gear and or wear as a bag and you can deploy and, you know, it's the size of a torso or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's something that we're open to, uh, to, to do and if it's based off the fat pack it would be fairly quick we can't make any promises but uh quicker than normal if it was just a concept from the ground up nice that's pretty cool yeah i've got some uh some quick ones just which product would you recommend of yours for the following purposes uh for medical stuff what's the the best just you know everyday carry pouch that you guys have um for everyday carry pouch for medical gear i mean really um the fat pack the five by eight is probably the best one um, cause it, it's able to fit a, a good amount of gear, um, for various, you know, medical purposes. Um, and, uh, it's the one I personally use myself. Um, the, the four by six is also good, but it's more of like a, like a small personal, I want to say more of a boo-boo kit, uh, with some very basic stuff on the inside. What I say is when customers ask, which one should I get? I will usually tell them if you've had training and you're confident in your gear, and your training, then the four by six you can get by what by with. But you know, if you're kind of new to it, or you know, the full scope of all the medical gear you could be carrying is something you feel more comfortable having on you, then the five by eight is kind of the the dialed in one that you can have everything in. Love it. Uh, you guys already talked about trauma bag coming, uh, possibly, maybe, perhaps. What about uh, the best pouch or pack for snacks? <laughs> <laughs> well uh then we're gonna go straight back to the sticky cube man i mean yeah. it doesn't weigh anything um that velcro on the back is uh what we kind of call part-time meaning it's not a full velcro sheet on the back it's not all uh, hook lined it's actually little islands or little uh you know ovals and circles so it doesn't add much weight to it so if you don't need that um that velcro ability then you just keep the the silencers on which is like the back of morale patch when you get it. it just has the loop on the back and because they compress down in their natural state they're at uh you know one inch deep mm -hmm. and then when you unzip them they'll go to three and a half so there's a technical question to your joke question Boom. <laughs> i love it <laughs> there's a you can fit a lot of snickers in there dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then i was trying to figure out which one would probably be best for videography kind of just while we were talking and i think that might be a toss-up yeah, as far as the backpacks go, um, it really would be a toss up between the Trident 21 uh, and the Trident 32, you know, depending how much photo or video gear you need to carry. Um, both backpacks are fully padded in the entire main compartment uh, on the new ones uh, for this year. Um, because of the full loop lining on the inside, you can you can attach some of our other new um, items like the sticky cubes, but also we have a, a new product called sticky panels which are um, elastic um, webbing panels, just like on the inside of the fat pack or, or our maximizer organizer pouches. So that way you have little different slots where you can put your gear in and then slap the whole thing onto any loop surface, like on the inside of the bag. But um, also with those, the, the new Tridents, they have the, um, uh, the new uh, padded dividers that can articulate, they can fold them into uh, their own little pockets uh, or also into little shelves, so you can really kind of customize the interior a little bit more like a uh, camera bag, for instance. Like you can make a maze, essentially. You can make almost a little holster, and you look down on it, and it looks like an unsolvable maze because, you know, everything's connected. And uh, 
Yeah, that works really well. And that's if you're going backpack. If you want to go to a messenger, we just released the Envoy 13 and 17. And so that's a traditional attache or messenger style bag that lends itself very well to that because of that dense foam padding that's there to protect your gear, of course, but it also uh, is complete. I mean, the whole thing has padding all the way around. So everything's um, pretty safe inside. Mm -hmm. Well protected. I like it. Dietrich, any any other questions about or any other you know what what is the best product for questions? No, I don't. I don't think I maybe mean, they've covered everything. Like I, we covered for hiking, uh, for just a student or you know somebody's going into classrooms like that. I think you know their line is you know not going to stand out super tactical, but yet if you wanted to slide a, a weapon in there or your whatever your eye fact, whatever you could do that and know it's not going to stand out going, Oh my gosh, that guy's got Molly over there. Like he's got to be super yeah. sketchy. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Uh, product of the week, Dietrich. Yeah. So we, we do a product of the week. Uh, we try to do it. And so I figured what the heck, let's talk about a van quest pack. And that five by eight is our most popular pack uh, that we have um, mm -hmm. by far. Yeah. So I think that one's the one I would highlight for people. We, we have them empty. So, uh, if VanQuest happens to be out of the red 5x8, which maybe they might be uh, just yeah. for temporary, um, <laughs> I have them in stock. Um, <laughs> and we have them in black. Uh, we have them in uh, tan, wolf gray, and red. So we can sell them empty if you want to put your own supplies in there. We also sell the pre-made kits as well. So we put our trauma kit in there, which you can either put a soft to your cat. You can put combat galls or sea locks in there. So you have complete trauma kit ready to go. And then we also put in our large kit, which is a boo-boo kit plus the trauma supplies. So you get all like the five by nines and four by fours and the little boo-boo type stuff. But then you get an Israeli pressure bandage, you get a cat tourniquet, an MPA, um, and there's a CPR mask in there as well. So basically you take that large kit and you could add in either a halo or hyphen chest seals, which is very easy to do. There's plenty of room left in that kit to do that. And you have a boo-boo kit plus a trauma kit all in one. I like it. Yeah, that five by eight. I, I think I have the four by six, but I, I probably better pick up a five by eight. You said I can get them at Medical Gear Outfitters. Yes, medicalgearoutfitters.com. And we have a coupon code, civilian medical, that will save 10%. All right. I love it. Uh, last question for you guys before we get out of here and let you guys go about your day. What kind of warranty do you guys offer? Uh, well, it's, a, it's pretty standard. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, a lifetime warranty against any defects, material, workmanship, and all that kind of the usual thing. But, uh, but as it is, though, I mean, we're, we're very stringent on, again, the materials and, and the build quality that we, that we use. Uh, but we always back up our product. We stand behind it. Uh, any issues you have, certainly contact us, let us know. Uh, we're more than happy to, to work something out or to help anybody out in those regards. All right. Wonderful. Where can people uh, find your products online? Where can they keep up with all your social media and all the other good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, they're always welcome to, to visit us at vanquest.com. Um, they can check out our Facebook page. Uh, it's uh, facebook.com slash vanquest gear. And also our Instagram page, which is uh, instagram.com slash vanquest gear. Um, and uh, of course, you know, you can see a lot of our gear on YouTube through Skinny Medic. Uh, as well as other uh, reviewers out there just by searching VanQuest gear on YouTube. Yeah, there, uh, there's probably, I think, close to 300 reviews now <laughs> on all of our gear uh, yeah. over the years. Um, but, you know, the, the the common thing you always see in, in the reviews is there's a lot of positive things that are said, and it's not because we incentivize our reviewers or anything. It's just that, you know, this is their honest opinion and, and their honest uh, experience with our gear. Uh, as Skitty Minnick, you know, can tell you from his experience. You guys aren't paying me millions of dollars for this review. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> At least buy me Jimmy John's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. We, we truly appreciate you guys being on the show and uh, listening to the show apparently as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. It, it really is nice because it, we can actually learn something. And again, it really isn't a substitute for training, but right. just to get the concept 
Um, just, you know, you never stop learning. And that's what we, we kind of take and put that into the products. We're learning from the customers, you know, week to week, day to day. Some agencies are saying there won't issue any um, medical kits that aren't red or blue. That's so, right. you know, it makes yeah. sense to keep up with that. You know, you guys have talked about Narcan and it's overuse and people flipping out about fentanyl. These things changes all the, they change all the time. So we got to change with it. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of the best way to do it, I think. Yeah. yeah overall, it's just you keep learning, keep uh, evolving. Have you guys put containers in for your uh, fentanyl gloves? Oh, totes, <laughs> man. <laughs> I got six mil gloves and uh, I can't put them on, but. I'll be so safe from fentanyl. Exactly. Right beside your tampons. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. My pontoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is amazing. Skinny medic. Any final words? No, I, I appreciate VanQuest coming on. I appreciate them working with us in the past. So uh, they're a great company. So I appreciate it. Yep. Definitely go check them out again. VanQuest.com. V-A-N-Q-U-E-S-T.com. That'll do it. And we will catch you guys next week. Subscribe at civmedical.com.